Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on Friday, August 25th. And a quick video about a story you may have heard of this week where Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin apparently took a trip down to Fort Knox and good news, everybody, claims the gold is there. Unfortunately, uh, no, no audit anytime in the near future. And it's, it's actually... Uh, seems to be a lot of confusion of why why now at this particular point in time the Treasury Secretary went to Fort Knox which as far as I know hasn't happened in decades uh, pretty much nobody's been allowed in there for a long time and of course he didn't go there and actually or maybe he did go there and count all the bars and didn't tell us but so far all we've seen is just a picture of him holding a gold bar at his desk and saying the gold is safe. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe that's my body's natural reaction to calling bullshit on that one. Again, uh, I've never met Steve Mnuchin. I'm not even sure if I really heard him talk much. I guess maybe I started tuning out the Treasury Secretaries after Tim Geithner, who... Again, I, I, I like to be careful about the way I speak about people, especially that I don't know or, in general, don't like to dwell in negative yet. Let's just put it this way. Steve Mnuchin, another former Goldman Sachs guy. And, you know, if you follow Goldman Sachs and some of the things they get themselves involved in over time, not... Not, not the guy I trust to watch my kids, for example. So, you know, the fact that Steve just comes out and says the gold is safe. You know, again, perhaps there's a large chance that it's just meaningless. Although when you think about how many people are involved in scripting and planning all these political agendas and the things that go on, well, certainly... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theory deep end today. <clears throat> Although there are a lot of uh, a lot of the guys that I respect that follow the gold and silver markets wonder if there is something more to this announcement, and just just seems bizarre of all the things <laughs> to come out when you see political financial unraveling seemingly by the day. That Steve mentions this bizarre tweet. I don't know why he chose to go to Fort Knox at this particular time. Um, again, you know, if you really wanted to assure people that the gold was there, why not do an audit? Uh, I think the last audit, confusing my dates, I guess I read this week, it was either, uh, well, I guess 40 years ago was when we last had the gold standard. I think it may have been 20 years earlier than that, that the last audit was. And certainly if you're holding an asset and you want people to have faith that it's there, you would think that an audit would be something you would encourage. Say, hey, we got nothing to hide. Bring in any auditor you want, outside auditor. Come take a look at it yourself. We'll have security there. And yet, of course, the government has refused that. Uh, Ron Paul was pushing for that. Uh, again, we've never had an audit of the Fed either. And, you know, you can, <laughs> you can kind of extrapolate why, because, you know, we've seen enough stuff, whether it's out of the Fed or the Treasury, that... You get the idea of why there's not an audit, because really, if there ever were an independent audit, it's, uh, I mean, just going based on the stuff that's been released and uncovered. If you're familiar with GATA, the gold antitrust, uh, oh, what does that last day stand for? They go and find all these documents that that slip out and there's really no shortage of proof of some of the nefarious things that go on here. So, personally, I'm not going to take Steve Mnuchin's word for it. Um, and there also could, another way to look at it, is that there could well be physical gold in there, but that it's been leased out. We've seen evidence, a lot of these lease transactions where physical gold might be here, but a lot of other people technically own it. 
Again, Steve didn't comment on that. And a lot of the other legitimate questions that I know in the Wall Street and the mainstream media, they like to look at anyone uh, who talks about gold or silver like some complete nut job. Yet, really, these are intelligent questions to ask. If there's, it's there, why refuse the audit? Perhaps you, you might be familiar, uh, it was either back in 2011 or 2012, when the Germans asked for their gold back, and the Fed told them we'd give you 10% over the next seven years or so. Never really explained that one. Uh, I believe they've gotten all their gold back finally, although they're, it seems that the serial numbers and bars that they got back weren't the ones that they put in there. And you continue to hear a lot of, just a lot of facts that add up over time of a lot of gold and silver on the move, which if you've ever stored gold or silver in a vault, you're probably well familiar that anytime you touch it or do anything, those fees rack up quickly. So why it took the Germans seven years to get their gold back, I'll let you uh, extrapolate for yourself why we can't have an audit of whether the gold is in Fort Knox. I'll let you extrapolate for yourself. For what it's worth, I actually was driving through, uh, driving across the country last year and figured, uh, why not? I wasn't too far out of the way, so I took a trip down to Fort Knox. And it was actually really bizarre. I don't, I guess I don't know exactly what I was expecting, but I know there is, for example, there's a, you can go in New York, you can take a tour of the Federal Reserve. And a lot of the, you know, the, you can go to the U.S. Mint, there's a gift shop, you can take tours and stuff. So I didn't, I didn't know exactly what to expect, although it was really just bizarre. Because I was driving, having on the GPS, and didn't even see anything, and I end up in the Fort Knox Army Barracks, and there's a guy, the security guy there, staring at me like, what's what's this guy doing here? And said I was just interested in checking out the, the, the gold vault. So he shows me how to get back there. And again, I don't know perhaps what it was that I was expecting or thinking I would see, but it was just bizarre because if you drive past it, it's kind of like a large fenced in yard, yet there was nobody there. There were a bunch of cars parked there, but not not a lot. And there was not, I didn't see a single person out there. And it's like, if you didn't know better, you would have just thought it was some abandoned building with a fence around it. And just, uh, I don't know, it was maybe a hundred yards in. And, and even the, uh, the way it's set up, it's kind of, if you come out of the army barracks and you drive around this corner, uh, I wouldn't call it a highway, but it's not its not a street where you can stop or there's a sidewalk or you can park your car and go even walk around the fence. And again, like most of these things, it was just bizarre. Take that for what you will. Take Steve Mnuchin's comment for what you will. In the end, does it even really matter that the gold is in there or not? I think you could have the gold in there, you could have the gold not in there, and that's not going to change any of the underlying fundamentals of the dollar. And even if that gold were there, still to have any, uh, if you remove the large paper short positions, you'd have a much higher price. If you look at just dividing the money, money supply, by the amount of gold that's claimed to be around, you know, it's it's over $10,000 an ounce, depending on which numbers you use of how many dollars are out there, which based on everything I've seen, I doubt that we ever really get some accurate figures there, because again, who, produ who produces those numbers? The Federal Reserve! So, in either case, uh, Leave your comments below. Why do you think Steve uh, left this cryptic quote? Was certainly bizarre. Uh, could it be something sketchy or signaling something? I guess that's possible. 
For now, I'm just going to regard it as something to keep an eye on and a quirky, somewhat amusing story that hopefully can make you giggle and let go of uh, some of the insanity of the rest of these things that are going on. But in either case, Steve says the gold is there, so as long as you trust politicians, life is good and everything's going to go on. Personally, I like owning gold and silver myself because I don't trust any of these guys and which I think is unfortunate, but again, you just look at the track record, assemble all the other facts, and when I look at the bubbles in the stock bond and real estate market versus two assets that have so many fundamental factors supporting them and yet are basically trading at the cost that it takes to get them out of the ground, certainly I uh, would be a seller of stock bond and real estate buyer of gold and silver, which by all means is not specific financial advice. Don't want to set the Gestapo. But that's what I do, and hopefully that might be helpful and give you a few things to think about.